Hello everyone! My name is Jennifer Stay. This is Coloring Bliss and today I want to teach you how to color gems, a very simple gem, on both black and white paper. So get out your color pencils and color along with me. Let's get started. Well, we recently released a new coloring book called Mandela Bliss Volume 1 and we released it on black paper. There's the beautiful black paper. And when I released it, one of the things I showed everybody was this page here where I was practicing and seeing how the black paper worked with color pencils. It was part of our testing of the black paper. And when I showed it to everyone, look how cool that looks, one of the questions I had was, do you want to know how to color simple gems on black and white paper? And I got a lot of feedback from you that you would like me to show you how to do this. So that's what today's video is about. Now these gems here were colored with Prismacolors, so I thought it might be fun for me to try a different brand of color pencils today. So we are trying out a new to me brand of color pencils. And that's these guys right here. So let me show you what brand. Because I don't want to try to pronounce it. Steve, how do you pronounce these? <laughs> well, I don't speak German or whatever it is, but I would guess Spirer Farben. Okay. So <laughs> what we're going to do, because I can't pronounce that, <laughs> is we're going to take a little hint from the paperwork that came inside this tin. And she, Tanya, pronounces, or not pronounces, refers to these pencils as the SF colored pencils. So here on out, instead of me fumbling over this name and totally butchering it and offending an entire awesome group of people on this planet, <laughs> I am just going to refer to it as the SF color pencils. How does that sound, Steve? <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> okay, so thank you, Tanya, for giving me that idea. So this set right here is a 96 set of color pencils. Let me get my face off of here so you can see it. And I'll have links to these pencils in case you are curious about them. It's a line of pencils that was highly recommended to us by you guys, our followers. So I'm excited to play with them. This is what they look like, the SF pencils. And I'll show you one close up. Has kind of a bronzy gold end here with a dipped end here. Has the name here and then it has a color name here and a color number here. So far my biggest complaint about these pencils is the same complaint I have about a lot of lines of pencils and that's that they've used a metallic writing for the name and number. So it's hard for me to read. I have to get it just right in the light for me to be able to read the wording on these pencils. So I've been having a lot of fun coloring with them. I haven't swatched the full set yet, but I have used a lot of the colors so far. Um, so I'll be showing you what I've used and what I've done so far. So it's nice that it came in a really nice tin with some pretty art on it. So yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying them so far. I'm not like wowed, I kind of miss my Prismacolors and I'm going to show you the comparison between the gems I colored with Prismacolors versus these, but they do have some very vivid colors. So that's fun. Okay, so this is the book that we're working in and the page that I am working on today again is this one with all of the circles. And these gems here were colored with the SF um, color pencils. I hope I don't giggle every time I say that. <laughs> um, so that's a quick comparison of the Prismacolors versus the SF. So you can see they're just not popping as much on black. Now, you know, Prismacolor is a very pigmented, very creamy, it's just a different formulation. So it could just be that this formula doesn't do as well on black. So here is the same pencils, this is the SF again on white. And you can see there the colors are much more vibrant on the white. See the difference? This is the same three colors here as it is here. So they definitely like to be on the white more than they do on the black. 
black, so that's good to know. Um, but even some of the colors of Prismacolor really struggled on black too, so I think that's just probably par for the course with most color pencils. A lot of color pencils lean on the translucent side. We never really think of color pencils as translucent, but a lot of them are. So you may want to swatch your color pencils onto black paper if you plan on doing a lot of coloring on black. And we do have swatch books and downloadables to help you all available on black paper. Come on over to Coloring Bliss. I have links in the video to help you see. You can get our swatch books printed on black paper or you can get the swatch book uh, digital and then print it however you need it there in your own home. And I have a ma made available the black paper to purchase as well. Oh, that's packs of 50. right. Isn't that exciting? So this black paper that Steve and I researched and did all this testing on to find what I felt like was the best black paper for coloring, that's what Steve's talking about, is now available that you can purchase in packs of 50. Okay, another thing that I'm going to make available to download is this sheet right here. This is the one that I have been using today to help me keep track of the SF pencils I was using in the three color um, combinations. So this is like a three color blend chart that Steve made for us last year, I believe. And it has been really handy to see. So all of these combinations are the combinations you see right here. So I'm gonna teach you a three color blend um, to make these gems. And then the ring around the gem that I'm going to show you how to do is made up of these colors down here, just some grays. So pretty much what you can do is pick any three colors and try it. It's pretty fun. Gems are, you know, you get to try anything you want. That's part of the fun of coloring gems. And when I drew this mandala, that's kind of what I had in mind was getting to color gems. <laughs> so you can, you know, do like I'm doing, which is use it as an, a, a place to experiment and just try different color combinations. Or you could practice a few color combos here on this color catalog three blend page. And then when you find one combo that you just adore, then go and repeat it over and over here on this mandala. It's kind of up to you. And then this mandala right here is available in our premium library, as well as this one right here, both available in our premium library. And to get access to that, all you need to do is become a colorist over at Coloring Bliss. It's just $5 a month. That's it. And you can cancel anytime you want. And that $5 goes towards supporting me and Steve, my husband and business partner. And it keeps Coloring Bliss open and us making videos like this for you. All right, so let's get to coloring with the SF pencils <laughs> and see what we can make. And I'm kind of wanting to do a blue uh, gem. So Steve, before he's he's busy working on other videos, before you walk away, do you want to pick a light, medium, and dark blue for <clears throat> us? Oh, wow. So here's the SF pencils. Oh, those are pretty. Yeah, really fun. Lots of colors. There's four trays. Wow, I love their, their design of it. <laughs> yeah, really fun. So um, what you want to pick for your light, medium, and dark is make sure that it's a distinct light, medium, and dark. And it doesn't have to be all light, medium, and dark blue. You could have a dark green, a medium blue, and a light blue. You could have a light green, medium blue, and a dark green. You know what I mean? But what you want to make sure is that it's a lightish tone. So something light, like um, think of intensity. Okay, that's a good word. Something a less intense color, a medium intensity color, and then a really deep intensity color. And that's what we need. So I want something in the blue family. I've already done something kind of in the blue greens. I'm feeling a blue violet. So I'm gonna so let, let Steve pick a light, Will medium, you swatch and dark. Those two for me? Um, he wants to I always swatch. like cobalt, but I also want to see that. Is it Prussian or what? So it? one thing I've noticed right away about these pencils, the SF pencils, is some of the dips on the end don't match the actual <clears throat> core, like, at all. So you got to be careful, okay? Which I was looking at the core. <laughs> so, yeah, when, when you're looking at pencils, especially a brand new set that you're not familiar with, always look at the tips 
more so than the end. The ends kind of get you into the right family and then look towards the tips for the actual color that might come out. So that's a little hint for you when you're trying to learn a new set of tools, especially color pencils. So Steve wants to see what these two look like. Okay, so I'm gonna flip them over. This is cobalt blue. Let them see it too. Cobalt blue, looks like that, pretty good match. And then this one is marine blue. Yep, they did pretty good with those two ends. Okay, let's go marine blue. Okay. So again, what he's looking for is light, medium, and dark in intensity, but he could choose anything he wants, really. Okay, that's my dark. Then I want to go with, <laughs> what's this one right there? Here, I'll let you swatch off to the side. So another suggestion I have for you. Santorini dreams. As you're doing this, he's... Okay, I like that. Okay. He, he's not... He, he doesn't struggle with picking colors. <laughs> Usually, oh, you, you could say hi. You're peeking oh, in. Oh, hi. Your, your face was there for just a second. <laughs> mm -hmm. So what I've been trying for is really picking a strong difference between the light, medium, and dark. You don't want um, something too close to each other. Hmm. Oh, he's holding it. That's a pretty color. You know what? Okay. So I want to see what it looks like. So what I picked is I want... I want a kind of blue-green light. For the light, okay. A blue, it leans a little bit blue-violet, but a pretty basic blue mid-tone, and then a blue-violet dark. Okay, so then what we would do is I come over to my cutter color catalog, and this color catalog, you can use it for more things than just gems. This is a great place to um, experiment with three color blends in general. So I've been trying to keep all my lights over here, so you could even like write light at the top, medium here, and dark here just to kind of keep yourself organized. And then I wrote the brand up here, SF up here, and it's the 96 set. And then here you write, you just do a quick swatch because you don't want to spend a lot of time here. You want to get over to your coloring, right? So just a quick swatch and then write the number down, 470. So that's actually the same light that I've used before, which is fine. It's just totally fine. Then the mid-tone he picked is Santorini Dreams. Mm -hmm. Ooh, 414. Okay, and as I'm swatching these out, I usually do this side too. And I usually do a big swatch of the light because I know I'm gonna be overlapping the colors on the gem, so I like to see what the overlap looks like. And then the dark he picked is marine blue, which is number 410, like that. And I usually put the blue right on top. Like I said, I like to see it overlapped because that's what's going to happen. And then we'll ask him, do you like that? Mm. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> okay, we have an approval. So that's going to be our three colors for the three color blend that I'm going to teach you. So I also wanted to recommend that if you feel a little shy about what color combinations you should try for your gems, um, because for the longest time I was like, there's got to be like a right color to do for gems and stuff. I recommend looking like Googling or going onto Pinterest and looking up gems and rocks and it's going to make you feel way more confident about looking and coloring and creating your own gems, okay? This is a book that we bought for our kids ages ago when they went through their geology phase. It seems like all kids go through a geology phase where they want to collect rocks. This is the book we bought them. I'm going to put a link to the latest version of this. It's a Smithsonian rock and gem um, book. Awesome book. Um, and all 
artists tend to start collecting books like this as sort of references to inspire and get them going with creativity. And this is one of mine that I love to look at. It's got little marks in it on pages that inspire me. So here's some cool, look at, see the different things you could try on your gems if you wanted a starburst on your gems. Look at all the colors, you guys. Like, there's no wrong. Blues, red violets, blacks, browns, yellows. Um, here's like turquoise colors. And, and they all these different hues in the turquoise. Like when I picture turquoise, I picture it more just that. But it isn't, it's everything. It's like, you can just go crazy with it. So many colors. Um, this is onyx. Look at the colors, you guys. So many neat things. Look what you could try if you wanted to. And then I wanted to show them also, because um, our family's going to go mining here soon. We're going to go mining for in a local mine looking for opals. And so I wanted to show you opals alone. Look at all the colors, blues and greens. And this is just one kind of stone. Look at them all at the bottom. All these different opals that you could try to create. One stone alone has just tons of colors. So just go for it. Don't be shy. Don't be nervous. I don't think there's a wrong. I think it's just for fun, okay? <laughs> so that should get you brave. Look for the link on this book if you're looking for a really fun inspiration. I'm gonna hand that to Steve. <laughs> okay, let me show you how to do a three color gem. So I'm gonna show it to you twice, once on white and once on black, depending on what you want to learn how to do. Let's start with the white, okay? And we'll go ahead and color it right here. I'm going to move this tin so I don't keep bumping it. There. All right. So step one is just to kind of get yourself into where your light source is. And if you look at my other gems, you can see that I've got a, a light source that's hitting central on all of these gems. Okay. So my lightest, brightest point on all of my gems is down the center of each of these gems. Okay, so we're going to kind of create a light point in the middle and then we're going to create the dark around each of those gems. All right, so I'm gonna start with my lightest. You're also gonna to wanna to grab your white and your black pencil, okay? Haven't been very impressed with the white in the SF set, um, but it is what it is, and I'm trying to use just the SF set, so I haven't branched out into my Prismacolor white or my other, I really like the Chinese white from the Derwent drawing set, but anyway, that's what I've got here. So let's start with my light color that we picked, which was number 470 Blue Lagoon. And what we're going to do is color a band of this lightest color up the center, just like this. Okay, because that's our lightest zone right there. Okay, and then we're going to take our mid-tone next. So this is our first pass with the colors. We're going to come back and do it again here in a minute. So don't feel like you have to fill in all the white or get this just right. This is just sort of blocking in the colors. Okay, so we're gonna have a band of the mid-tone here and another band of the mid-tone right here. I like this first pass of color because it kind of gets me brave for the final or next pass, okay? All right, so then we're gonna come in with the dark tone. And the dark tone gives this um, contrast, gives this depth, and gives us shape of the gem, okay? So it's kind of on, the white, uh, on both papers, the dark is almost the most important almost. <laughs> so the dark is going to align the whole gem, but it's going to be more heavy handed here on the left and the right side of the gem. Okay, because that's where our, um, our light source is down the middle. So on the right and the left, we get more of the dark. But because this is a three dimensional gem, we want it to feel like it's curving this direction too. So we put our 
a little band of the dark across the top, just a small little line of it, and a small little line of it down here as well. That's going to help with that rounded feel that we're getting like up here. You can see how this feels rounded, okay? And then I usually just take a minute and I go through and I make sure I've gotten all the way up to the illustration line. Don't leave any little white gaps. So make sure your pencil is sharp for this. It's worth taking a second and doing some sharpening if you need to. Okay, now um, usually I'll do some really light pressure like feather pressure here out into the mid-tone area, and I'm still using my dark pencil. So really feather light. If you have a heavy hand with your color pencil, which most beginning colorists have that problem, try taking your pencil and sliding your hand farther back. That will force you to have lighter pressure, okay? It's a little more, it makes you be a little more clumsy, um, but I think that's why it makes you slow down and have lighter pressure too. So once you've trained yourself to be really good at light pressure, you can come in and choke in really tight to the tip and go super feather light pressure. Okay, that, that softens out that edge and gets us ready to come back in with the medium, 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 middle tone. <laughs> okay, so we've got a good kind of halo shape going on. So what we're looking for, is almost like two parentheses, right? We've got the highlight in the middle with two parentheses, one on this side and one on this side, and we've created that feel. And then we've got a little bit of the dark on the top and the bottom. Okay, now we're gonna grab the mid-tone and we're gonna start extending it out. We can be a little bit braver now, extending it towards the center, but keep that center nice and bright. We want a nice highlight of that color in the center. So light pressure, little circles, and just kind of extend that mid-tone color a little bit in towards the center. And then a little bit up here just to blend that out. It's kind of like the hat and the feet of the gem that gives it that curve. You can go on top of the dark to help blend out any white of the paper. And all of some of these things will change a little bit when we go to the black paper, you'll see. Because we don't have to worry about the white of the paper when we're on black paper, it's kind of cool. Okay, that's looking really well blended and smooth. So now we get to move back to our lightest color, which is that Blue Lagoon. And I'm gonna go in tiny little circles across the whole face of the gem. And we can come way out here to the darkest point because remember he picked sort of a bluish green color. So I kind of want that color to glow across the whole thing. Really light pressure. So there's actually quite a lot of the white of the paper still showing here. Now, I wanna add some cracks and imperfections into our little gem. You can do that with little dots. Again, look at reference photos, okay? There's all different kinds of ways to do the cracks. I usually go for the lightning bolt look. I wanna show you this gem right here. I was experimenting with a couple things. So here you can see I used black for the lightning bolt cracks, and I also used the darkest color, the red, for the lightning bolt cracks. Both look good. Like here, this is all black. This all black, all black here. I've got black and red. I kind of dig in the red on that one a lot. Um, I've also tried dots. Dots look really cool, just doing like little speckles. It, it, that gives it really neat texture. So there's so many things. Again, look at reference photos. Sometimes the cracks look like, almost like a checkerboard pattern on the surface of the gem. So lots of different options for the imperfections in your gem. It's up to you. There's really no wrong here. Again, be brave. So I have a really sharpened up nice tip on my pencil. I'm just gonna go for the black again, and we're gonna do a lightning bolt. And sometimes my lightning bolts look more like like a real crack and sometimes it looks like I didn't do that great and so I try not to think about it too much. 
if I overthink it, they look worse. So don't mm -hmm. overthink it, okay? Just be, what's the word? Random with it. Don't be too geometric, unless you're going for a really geometric look. Like I said, I don't think there's a wrong here. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of jag, 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 jag there. I don't know. <laughs> okay, it's my world and my gem. I get to do what I want, right? A few more jug, jug, jugs. There, I'm done. Okay, so you can try what you want. Try some speckles. Try a blue jag, jag. Try what you want. Okay, now I'm going to take my white pencil and I'm going to go over the top. Now, if I was using my Prismacolor white or my Chinese white, went drawing white. Wow, it would add so much white. But we're using the SF white, which is a pretty, let's face it, it's a pretty pathetic white. But that's all right. What it is going to do, white does a couple things for us. It'll add a little white, so it's going to tint. That's what you do when you add white to a color, it tints. But it's also going to blend and kind of creamify that layer and make it really soft and, and dreamy. You look up here at this layer here and it's all dreamy and makes the everything look dreamy. Go right over your crack because it'll dreamify the crack too. Okay. A little bit of white. So it didn't really tint too much because this is a wimpy white. If you were using a, a, a more potent white, it would tint it a lot. Okay, now you look at your, your little gem and you decide what you want to do. Do you wish the white was gone? If it was, now you go to your burnishing pressure, which is what we just did there. I used pretty heavy, medium to heavy pressure to do that. <clears throat> you mean white of the paper, right? Right. If you don't like those little white speckles, let me bring it up to camera a little closer. You can see some white speckles here. Sometimes I really like the white speckles. When you look at gems, they have white speckles sometimes in it. So sometimes I like it. Sometimes I like to go through and get rid of all the white speckles. On this one, that's what I did. We're gonna do that for this one. So down the center, when I did my medium to heavy pressure with the white pencil, it got rid of all the white speckles down the middle, but we still have some white speckles out here. So let's get rid of that. I'm gonna use my lightest tone here. And what that'll do is in all those white speckles, it's going to add more of that blue-green color that Steve picked, which I think will look really cool. I could have picked my medium tone. This is the medium tone zone. That would look cool. I could use a colorless blender pencil. That would look cool too. It wouldn't add any color. It would just do the burnishing pressure. Okay. I could try odorless mineral spirits, which is a solvent and that would work too. There's so many options. Look how this side I've burnished in. That means medium to heavy pressure with the pencil and all the speckles are gone and it's added this sort of blue-green glow. Can you see that? Look how cool that is. So this side it hasn't had that treatment yet. No blue-green glow. Let's do it to this side now. So this little step just takes a second and it can really change the look. Okay, really upped that, that highlight up the center that we're working on. We're almost done. Okay, now I'm going to grab your black pencil and you have some choices here. You can very lightly darken these edges up a touch more. We're talking about something called contrast. Contrast is when you put two things side by side with each other, um, it should have some good um, difference between the two colors, okay? I want the darks to feel really good next to the light. So when someone looks at this, they can tell this area is definitely lighter than the sides, which are a lot darker. So I want the edges to feel nice and dark. So I'm doing super light pressure and adding just a little kiss of black here on the sides just to make them feel a little bit more dark, a little more contrast. That's it, just a little kiss of black. Okay, now we get to add that shiny bright white highlight. And for that, we are gonna reach for something different because this white would never do it. 
This is my white Posca pen. It is the 0.7 millimeter Una Posca paint pen. I'll put a link to this as well in the video description. I don't usually use a gel pen anymore for my white highlights because they're not dependable. Wah wah. <laughs> so you gotta shake this guy up. And usually you open the cap up off to the side so in case there's any paint buildup it will spritz onto your surface over here rather than onto your art. And then for me I'm putting my highlights just a little line and a dot and you want them where your brightest points are. So that's all I'm doing for my highlights. Okay, now let's go over and I'm going to show you again on black and it's going to go a lot faster this time. A couple reasons why it's going to go faster. I'm not going to have to step you through it quite so slow. And secondly, on black it's a little different. Okay, so I have all the same pencils. I've got my light, medium, and dark blue and I've got black and I've got white. That's all. Okay, let's start with light. And look how different this is going to look on here. Okay, that color is doing well on black. Sometimes when I do the light color on black, it actually looks white. So that one did well. It's, it's doing good. Okay, mid-tone, remember, it's like the parentheses, the right and the left. So we're going to the left and the right of that highlight we just created with the mid-tone first. Okay. Light pressure. Everything at the very first step is all light pressure. Second step is our darkest. And hopefully this will really glow. So remember, this guy isn't just on the right and left. He's going to go all the way around to give it that three-dimensional look. So if you were to download this page, become a Bliss Colorist, again, just five bucks a month, and download this page, look at all these circles that you get to practice on. You could fill this thing up with so many gems, and um, by the time you finished your three color blends with gems, you would be a pro at gems. <laughs> Think how cool this page would look. Okay, so we've gone all the way around with our dark. So we're gonna go back. Uh, actually, I think what I'm gonna do is grab my white real quick, and I'm gonna add a little extra white in the middle right now. Now, when you're working on black paper, Every crumb that falls off of your color pencil you're going to see. So I recommend you have some sort of brush. This is just a makeup like blush brush just to keep the, the crumbs off. Okay, do you see how that white line helped bring up the glow? Okay, now we're going to grab our mid our darkest tone one more time here and really build it in. Now because the dark is against dark now, the contrast is the other way around. It's going to be easy for us to establish the light now because we're on dark paper. The dark is where our problem is now. We have to make that dark really stand out next to that black. So we want to spend a little extra time. This is all light pressure here, but we don't have to worry about things like the white speckles of the paper anymore. Kind of cool. It's weird that you have to worry about black speckles of the paper. <laughs> yeah, but it's almost, it helps these gems. Like, I'm not worrying about the black speckles at all because it kind of helps with the little lightning wow. bolts you put through yeah. it. It makes the gems look all cool. <laughs> so it's actually, you don't have to worry about burnishing as much. So the gems actually go a lot faster on the black than they do on the white because that burnishing step, you can skip it. I think they look better, too. I think they do, too. <laughs> okay, now I'm to the mid-tone. Remember, we're going to gently... Now, some pencils tend to have some sort of binder or base that's a little more white. So, uh, maybe what it is is it's less trans less translucent, so more opaque. Hello, everyone. Mine's <laughs> Hi, Jennifer. <laughs> 
So this pencil here, this um, Santorini Dreams, is one of those pencils that seems to be more opaque. So as I'm coloring it down, if I come out on top of the dark blue, I'm seeing streaks from this pencil and it's because it's a more opaque pencil. So black paper has its own, you know, we're worrying about white of the paper over here. Here, I'm having to worry about some pencils are more translucent and some are more opaque. It's just different things you have to worry about. But man, is it fun and satisfying. <laughs> okay, so I'm doing light to medium pressure, little circles, blendy, blendy, blendy. Okay, now to the lightest pencil. And we're gonna go over that white line I created, but very, very lightly, okay? Nice and light. Okay. That's looking good. Look how glowy that is. Okay, let's add our lightning bolt cracks. Again, just relax and be very organic and not planned here, okay? I'm gonna come from the top this time. Do, 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 do. And then do, 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 do. Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> doop, doop, doop. You have to make those sounds. Doop, doop. I do in my head every time. I don't usually do it out loud. I'm doing that for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So there you have it. I'm feeling pretty good about it. Now you could come back again. I remember, um, we, we want contrast. So I'm coming in with my white again, seeing if it makes a difference. Not really. This white's pathetic. Okay, that didn't do anything. Um, let's try, I'm just kind of fiddling now, having fun. This is my lightest tone, just having fun. I'm coming in with my darkest again. Now, we could come in with black. But let me tell you, this black is really weird on the black paper. It almost looks like when you color with it, and we're gonna see that when we do the rings, it almost looks like there's a hole in the paper. The Prismacolor Black does not do this, so you're gonna have to experiment with your own pencils and see if your pencils do this. So just just have fun with your pencils and see what it does. So I'm gonna be really careful here because I don't want a hole in my gem. Just a little kiss of it. Okay, I like that. It looks really cool. Let's add our same Tosca highlight. Shake, shake, shake. Open it off to the side. Come on in. And here comes our highlight, line, dot, line, dot. Okay, now I'm gonna teach you how to do the silver ring around the edges. I really prefer the silver ring that I got out of the Prismacolor. Um, again, I think these are a little bit more opaque, these pencils, the Prismacolor, but I think the silver line I'm getting here is really pretty too. So I don't think there's a bad one here. So again, I picked um, a light, medium, and dark, and my dark is the black, and then I'm using white, okay? So um, I've got the black, the white, I've got silver, uh-oh, I can't pronounce that word, but it's number 685, Vizla. Oh dear. <laughs> And then the other one is Seal Gray, 698, okay? So the dark gray is actually black is what I'm using, okay? So this is really easy. Again, think parentheses, okay? Let's start with the gray. On right. The gray on the white, yeah, okay? So think parentheses again, okay? So first is our black. That's our darkest color. So we'll do a little spot of black. Okay, because our light, remember, think of the light as it's running straight up like that, okay? Then go to the mid-tone. We're gonna follow kind of similar steps where the first round of color just establishes where everything's gonna go. And then the second time through the pencils, We'll finesse it all and make it look right. Okay, there's our mid-tone. And then we go to our lightest color. 
And then we could either reserve some of the white of the paper. You got lots of options here. So we'll go really, really light pressure right there so it's just kissing it with the gray. Really, really light. There. Okay, it looks pretty decent just that way right there. Okay, now I'm going to add just a little bit of white here to kind of mix it in. Here we go. Let's deepen this up. Okay, this is the black. Kind of a weird black. So my thinking on these rings was I wanted it to look a little chrome-like mirror finish on these rings. So to get a chrome sort of metal finish, again, it's all about contrast. Really, really dark darks, really, really white whites. So this moment here of dark, you want it to be pretty dark. Okay, then the mid-tone comes in like that, pushing medium pressure here, and then a light pressure to blend it out towards the lightest tone. Medium pressure out to light. Medium out to light. Kind of reminds me of a vinyl record every time I color these. Okay, now to our lightest gray. Medium pressure to blend this out to light pressure. And then really light pressure here in the highest highlight area. Medium. And medium over here, medium pressure to the lightest pressure. And then if you feel like you want to bring in white again, kind of lighten and blend out that lightest part. Okay. And that's the ring. Then of course you can come back and finesse a little bit if you feel like the black wasn't black enough, or if there's some white of the paper that's bugging you, you can take care of all of that. But I'm liking how that looks. Okay, Posca pen time. So for these rings, I've been adding a couple strikes of the Posca pen. Okay, let me show you how I've been doing that. So I've been doing like a couple bands of the white like this. Just like that. And let it dry. Okay, let's do the same on the black. And you can see how different these same pencils react on the black paper. And the first thing I want you to see is how weird this black looks on this black paper. I don't know what's going on. This is just medium to light pressure here. Because I really don't like the way this black pencil looks just on the bare black paper. I think it looks better as a, let's see, as a shade. Shade is when you put black on top of a color. There. Doesn't it look like there's a hole in the paper now? <laughs> so odd. Okay, now we'll go to the mid-tone. See how weird? And I think it's just because this black is a more translucent color and this mid-tone gray is a more opaque color. Whatever the binders are or the pigments, I don't know what it is. I'm not a color chemist. But whatever they did, see what I mean now? It looks like there's a hole there. It's kind of weird. Kind of weird. Okay, now we go to our lightest, which almost looks white. See? That's what I was talking about, that some colors 
when you color them out onto black, they almost look white. So if you decide to buy one of our coloring books on white on the black paper, I highly recommend that you get a swatch book too and um, swatch the tools that you plan on using on the black paper so that you can see what they look like and how they perform because I'm finding even within one set of tools there's a vast difference in the way they're performing on the black. Okay, here's the white. See, there's not much of a difference between this white and that light gray. In fact, if I had Steve look at this, I doubt he would see or even guess that I used a different color here. But I'm going to try. Okay, there we go, it's looking pretty good. Let's go through and finesse now. Now, because I'm having trouble with my black here, I'm gonna go over the black with my mid-tone gray to try to make it look similar in translucency. Like that, see, it looks a little better now. And then back to my black again, just to give that contrast. Just a little light pressure finesse. Okay, back to mid-tone, and let's just smooth everything out, smooth all the transitions out, light to medium pressure. Again, we don't have to worry now about the uh, white of the paper because it's just black, and the black coming up through this metal effect I think looks really nice. Adds to the metal shine, the sort of mirror, um, metal chrome look that we're going for. Okay, and now the white one more time. Try to get that as bright of a highlight in that spot as possible. Okay, that's how I do the metal ring. Let's add a white Posca highlight. And now you know, oh, so good. The white highlight on the black paper is so good. So good, let me show you straight down how this looks. Look how good. I love your blue, Steve. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Okay, so there's the two blue. Which oh, wow, they look very different. Very different on the white versus on the black. It's so fun. This different, just changing one element, the paper, really changes the way you color, the way the, the color pencils perform, and it just, it's really been reigniting my excitement for the same tools and makes me want to try things and just play with the colors and the color combinations. So I have downloads for you. I have tools to help you through all this so that you can just really embrace coloring gems and get really good at it. Remember, just pick three colors, be brave, um, look at reference photos so that you can see that really anything goes with rocks and gems. You can't get it wrong. Just have fun and experiment and practice, practice, practice so that you can get confident with those blends. And if you want more tutorials and workshops, come and check out the Bliss Partners because we have all kinds of workshops where we learn about color pencil blending, marker blending. We learn about color picking. If you have a hard time picking colors, we have an entire four-part workshop series dedicated to helping you learn how to pick colors. And we even have series where we discover new tools like gouache paint and water-soluble crayons. It's such a fun place to come and learn about coloring and we would love to have you come and join us there. Thanks for joining us with this video. I hope you learned a lot. Make sure you give us a like on your way out and I hope you have a wonderful, colorful, blissful day. Bye-bye everyone.